little bit as I let it down. Boom, you saw how it just slipped up? That means it just went in and seated perfectly. What's up everybody? It's Ryan from Taxi Garage here with you today. And today we're gonna be going over how to install a brand new Razer headset bearing. And we're gonna be discussing on some of the issues that can happen when these bearing sets go bad and why you actually need to change them or service them on a regular basis. So here we have today a stock Razer standard size crazy cart. And generally what you'll notice is that, you know, the steering might be kind of stiff on your cart or it might feel kind of wobbly or it might shake a lot as you're driving. And those are all common issues of either the bearings being worn out in the headset or the bearings being loose. So today we'll show you what we've got here from our website, you can order this. This is the Razer OEM headset bearing set and we'll go ahead and open this up for you today and we'll show you what it comes with. So this is what it looks like inside. I'm gonna go ahead and take a razor blade and go ahead and gently cut away the, the tape holding the foam, make it a little easier to open it up and you'll see all the components that it comes with. So these are the components of what normally comes in a brand new Razer headset kit. This is the, the washer. This is the top locking nut that goes on top of the washer. This is your lower headset uh, bearing race, which is pressed into this nut. Or this is your upper headset bearing race, actually. And this is the nut that allows you to adjust it. And then you can see it comes with a basically a cup for the bearing set to sit in, and then another cup for the other bearing set to sit in. They come pre-greased, so you really don't have to do much with them. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on the tools that we need to take apart the Crazy Cart headset and service this. So we're gonna start over here. We have your handy little gun. If you have a gun, cool. With a 3 ace drive, then that's great. If not, we're gonna show you how to do it with the hand tool as well, just in case you know, you're not as fortunate enough to have one of these electric guns. Um, thank you, Snap-on, it's yep. a great tool. And um, we're going to be using the six millimeter Allen key. And we're going to be using the Phillips head screwdriver on a gun to make life easy. Uh, we're going to be using some, some cutters. And for right now, we're going to show you how to do it with locking wrench or basically adjustable wrenches. And um, these are going to let you see what it's like to do it if you have the minimum amount of tools, because there is a specific tool that you're supposed to have to do the headset adjustment, but we're gonna show you what it's like, you know, with just your household tools so everyone is able to do it. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your six millimeter and you're gonna put it on your 3 h drive wrench and you're gonna turn the wheel counterclockwise so the arrow is pointing behind you and basically the, the steering wheel is gonna lock and you won't be able to actually turn it anymore. This allows you to unscrew this nut and essentially remove the steering wheel. So you don't have to fully unscrew this nut. You basically just unscrew it a little bit just so it's sticking up above the actual steering wheel. And you take your hands and try to get this in the shot and you just tap up at the same time. And you'll see it actually uses a piece which is called a wedge anchor and it actually locks itself into place when you tighten the nut. So you're gonna wanna not fully unscrew this otherwise you will drop this into the stem and you'll have to fish it out with a magnet or flip the card upside down, one or the other. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the electric screwdriver, Phillips head, and we're gonna go ahead and remove all the body panels. This is a fairly simple process. We like to take all the screws and throw them on the seat, try to keep track of everything. It makes life a little easier. We like to remove both covers to get full access. It's worth the extra bit of the minute that it takes to remove both of them, especially if you have an electric gun. Set them aside, someplace safe if you care about them. All right, 
So now what we're looking at are the components of the bearing kit that we saw. Basically, this is where the bearings sit right here in this lower race and up here in this upper race. And the neck to rotate needs a good set of bearings. And we're gonna see what these ones look like when we remove it because this one is actually very difficult to turn and actually has a notchy feeling to it as well. So we're gonna see what type of damage has been done to this. This is a brand new cart. Just like every cart, we go through and we inspect them and these are some of the things we find wrong with them that need to be fixed or adjusted. So basically, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna turn the, the, the actual steering neck all the way until it's bottomed out, basically counterclockwise so it can't turn anymore. And then you're gonna take your pliers and you're gonna grab that top nut and you're gonna hold the cart still and you're gonna unscrew that top nut. And sometimes the nut right beneath it will spin with it, sometimes it won't. You can see it was initially and now it, it broke free from it. You're gonna remove this nut completely. You set it on the seat, here's the washer. Set it on the seat. Now you're gonna to wanna to grab this nut, loosen it a little bit so you can unscrew it by hand. Sometimes they're a little tough and you have to use the wrench on it. Sometimes they come off with just simple hand unscrew. This one's kind of in between. It's kind of tough, it's kind of not tough, but it's not coming off super quick. Almost there. Oh man, this is, this is work right here. Okay, there we go. That's, that's how I like it when they just spin off real easy like that. All right, so you can see, we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna take a look at this bearing, which is the top bearing. And we're gonna remove it basically with just a little pick and we'll check it out and see what's going on. This one appears to be in perfect shape. You can see all the balls are sitting in their place. The actual piece is still circular in shape. So it appears to be in perfect shape. So we're gonna set that aside over here. It's kind of greasy, so we set it off to the side. We don't wanna get the grease on the cart. Um, and then the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is, you're gonna to wanna to get like a block of wood or something to kind of prop the cart up on, especially if you're working by yourself, um, because basically you have to lower this steering neck assembly out of the cart and you'll see as I start to lift the cart up you'll see the actual neck wants to come out and we'll be able to see the condition of these bearings um, and these bearings appear to be in great shape as well um, but we're still going to show you today um, you know how to replace these and what's necessary to get to this bottom set of bearings because sometimes you basically you're not able to remove this without doing a little bit of extra work to get to that bottom set of bearings so right now, that little bit of extra work consists of removing the factory batteries, remove the wing nut, and you can get to the factory batteries, remove them out of the cart. They should slide right out. A little bit of finagling, little four pin clip, push the clip in, should come out fairly easily. Sometimes they don't. Boom, that's out. Move everything out of the way. Set your, set your batteries aside. And then the reason why we're getting into this area is because the wiring here doesn't allow you to lower this piece to get it out low enough to where you can replace this lower bearing. So basically we have to give it a little more slack on this wiring. And basically right here, you can see this blue and yellow wire. This was connected before and I just unclipped it. Basically you push the button down, unclip it, and this is actually the wiring that goes to this motor. And what we're gonna do is now, we're gonna snip these other little zip ties that are locking the wiring in place. I'm gonna grab my snips right here. We're gonna snip these zip ties, remove them, get in there. Oh, okay. Okay, so now you can see as I pull on this wire in here, there's still one more zip tie down here, kind of holding them all together. There we go. I just cut the zip tie and now I should be able to pull this wiring out. You can see it's kind of moving a bit now as I pull it. Um, so basically you want to pull it out so there's enough slack up here. And now what you can do is 
you can lift up the cart, you can pull this piece out to the side and kind of just really pull this out, set the cart back down so you can service it. So this is kind of a way where you don't have to fully remove the wiring and you can still get to the lower bearing. And we're gonna go ahead and remove the lower bearing. And we're gonna take our new set of bearings and we're gonna go ahead and check it, make sure everything looks great with it. Grease is fresh. I'm gonna go ahead and insert it. And you always wanna insert it with the balls facing up on this lower one. If you see this flat edge, when you install it, that's incorrect. The balls need to be visible when you install it. It's very easy to put that in upside down and cause issues. Now that we've replaced the lower bearing, you can basically go and do exactly what we just did, but in reverse. Because basically this is the last piece of the puzzle to replacing the headset bearings. So you're gonna lift up your cart, you're gonna slide the neck back into the tube. And you, as you come down with this crazy cart, the whole cart itself, you really want to pay attention to how this bearing sits on this lower race. So you may have to fiddle with it before you let the full weight of the cart come and sit down. And you can see it's pushing out the side a little bit as I let it down, boom, you saw how it just slipped up? That means it just went in and seated perfectly, right when there's about that much gap. And then you turn the wheel and you can feel just by, and you can also see how smooth it's already beginning to spin. So next thing we're gonna do is, just like what we did before, we're gonna fish the wiring back into the cart. We're not gonna plug this stuff back in yet because there's still something we have to do with the wiring after we finish installing the headset. So just hold off on touching the wiring. You're gonna grab your next headset bearing right over here, inspect it as well. Now the top headset bearing faces the opposite way. And you're actually gonna have the flat spot facing up this time. If you have the balls facing up on the upper bearing, that's incorrect. You need to have the balls facing down so when it sits in, you have a nice flat lip here that sits nice and flush with the other bearing cup. Next thing to do is grab your new race with the nut installed. Go ahead and gently thread it on. It takes a little bit of fiddling because these nuts don't always sit perfectly on the top. Whose nuts? Oh, these nuts. <laughs> Taxi Garage's nuts. And sometimes the threads might feel funny. You kind of have to feel it out. Do not force it on. I'm looking at it right now and the way I just put it on is fairly crooked. So you really have to fiddle with it and get it to sit just right to where when you look at it from the side, you can see that it's sitting parallel with the threads. And I'll check it here. I think I got it. I might not have. Seems like I got it. Let's see. No, I did not get it. Generally, it should thread on very easily. So the fact that I had to use a wrench should have been a dead giveaway for myself, but it's kind of deceiving, which is why we're making a video on how to do it, is that we expect most people to have to fiddle with it. And then there, boom, all of a sudden, now I've got it in the correct spot and it goes down like buttery. So as you're bringing it down, you can see the, the neck actually still will move around and you need to kind of move the neck forward so this piece sits centered over the lower piece. And as you snug it up, you wanna just snug it hand tight. You're gonna pick up the front of the cart and you wanna see the neck spin very effortlessly. Basically, you wanna see just a quick push and it should spin as if it's on bearings, which it is. So you can see that that is basically as perfect as you want it. You're gonna check for some play, see if it wobbles anymore. You can see up here it's not wobbling anymore as I shake the bottom neck. Um, so we can see that hand tight is basically the perfect amount of compression for these bearings to give you a really good smooth motion on the steering. Um, and that obviously aids in being able to drive these better. If the steering isn't smooth and it's notchy, it becomes very unpredictable and hard to drive these carts. You can have a horrible shaking or 
you know, vibration feeling as you're driving the cart. This is due to this not being adjusted correctly or not being serviced properly. So definitely check this video because this should solve all of your issues with that. So the last pieces of the puzzle, the new lock washer, which is basically just a washer, and then the new lock nut. Go ahead and spin that on. And this is the most important step when finishing these headset bearings is that you need two of these. This is a rudimentary version of the tools that you would use. This is not the actual headset adjustment tool. This is just what we figured most people would be able to have in their home set, tool, set of tools. So this is what we recommend for most people to adjust their headset properly. So you're gonna turn the steering clockwise this time until it's completely maxed out. I can't turn it any further. Then you're gonna check to make sure that this bottom nut is just hand tight. You can kind of see I'm just making sure it's just a hair. So I go to hand tight and then I back it off about, I don't know, a quarter of a turn. Right about there. That's what I like to do in my experience. And what I do is I, I try to grab onto this bottom lower race and you're gonna try to hold this lower nut still while you tighten the top nut on top of it. And it's kind of tricky, but obviously if you've done it a ton of times like myself, it's not that difficult. The trick is just checking your work after you do it. So you can see the bottom nut is not moving as I'm tightening that top nut. Now, when I pick up the cart, we should still have that really buttery smooth steering that we saw before as I was just spinning it by hand. So let's go ahead and check it. And I mean, it, it doesn't get any better than that. I mean, that's gonna give you the best drivability that's gonna make this cart so much more predictable. It's gonna get rid of the vibration that you get when you're steering or the, the steering wheel shake that everybody complains about. So definitely this is the first thing to look at um, when you have those issues. And then the next thing that you're gonna wanna look at, just an, another tip from this video about steering wheel shake, is that you do wanna check your tire. A lot of the times these tires can have a flat spot in them. And if you see a flat spot on your air tire or the air tire isn't aired up to about 50 or 60 PSI if you're an adult, then you will feel a lot of vibration from this tire not being perfectly circular. The new Taxi Garage tires are a harder compound than the normal solid tires and they do get rid of that issue as well. So we do recommend if you're having the steering shake issue, get a solid tire and do the headset bearing adjustment or replacement and you will almost guaranteed get rid of those issues. So the last part we have to do for this piece of, piece of the job is we have to reset where the wiring was from factory. And what you wanna do is now you're gonna turn the steering wheel all the way counterclockwise and you're gonna see the wiring is now maxed out in its length in the counterclockwise direction. You're gonna grab a brand new zip tie from your zip tie collection. I chose black because I, you know, just like this, it blends in with the color of the cart. Looks good. Fish your zip tie through. Use this little groove right here to lock your zip tie into it. And go ahead and lock the zip tie at that position. Pull it tight. And now boom, now your wiring is locked at the proper position to where it will not interfere with the steering components as you steer it. You can see it has this metal sheath around it to let it rub and bump into things down here, but it actually has a perfect length when you steer the cart in the way I just showed you and set it that way. So I like to try to flush cut these. I know Nick would be very upset if I didn't. So doing it for you, Nick. Here we go. Okay, no cuts. Now you can go ahead and plug your motor back in. The motor wiring, go ahead and plug that back in. Shove the wires up under there. Go ahead and start to remove your tools. You can get rid of the, uh, the old headset bearing set, top nut, bottom nut, all that stuff, set it aside. You can save these cups. Set that all aside for a spare parts cart in case you buy another one and wanna have some fun tinkering. Um, you're going to grab your stock batteries. You're going to go ahead and slide those back in. I generally like to slide them in in this direction where the fuse is on the inside and this plug is on the outside. 
So basically you're just gonna slide them in. The one thing you have to do is you do have to check the wiring as you're sliding it in. It likes to get caught on things. So bend down a little or put your cart on a stand so you can see what's going on down there. Otherwise you'll fiddle with this for quite a while because it is kind of tricky to get it all to sit in there correctly. Go ahead and plug your batteries back in. And you're going to shove the wiring back under this corner. And you're going to obviously test the cart, make sure the battery's plugged in, everything's working, yada yada. Um, you're going to take your battery hold down bracket, the little J hook, slide it back up under the cart. Line it up with the battery holder. Sometimes it's a little finicky. I'm going to push this from the other side. Sometimes it takes an extra hand to push the bracket and get the bolts to come through like that. Slide on your, your wing nut. Go ahead and tighten it down. Keeps your battery secure. Go ahead and put the throttle cable just like that. And that'll allow basically the covers to fit back over with no fitting. In. Same with this plug, you want it sitting over the batteries. Um, and then basically you're gonna take your covers and you're gonna slide them back over. Make sure they line up with all the holes. Your other cover, slide it back over. Start grabbing your screws, start putting it back together. I like to start my screws on the far corners of these plastics because um, if you start from one side and you start to tighten it, uh, we found that it's kind of difficult to line up the, the remaining holes. So we do the two outer holes first and then we work our way from either left to right or right to left. Obviously we definitely suggest having a power screwdriver because this is kind of tedious if you do it by hand. Not difficult, but Somewhat tedious. Cool, cool, almost there. All right, that side's done. Seven screws per side. Grab your next seven. And like I said, I pin it from both sides first, the front, and then I pin the rear. Get up under that e-brake. It's a little finicky. Put these screws down and get a better grip. All right, all right. Jeff Jones? Yeah, I don't know. We're watching Formula D right now, too, as we're doing this for you guys. Go Chelsea Vanofa. Big supporter of our products, great friend. Great driver, amazing driver. And uh, we're out here rooting for him today, that's for sure. All right, so we got all the covers back reinstalled. We're gonna remove all the tools from the cart because we're basically ready for the last step, which is reinstalling your steering wheel. And sometimes it's a little easier if you unscrew this screw a little more till about you see a, you know, one or two threads sticking out of that piece and you'll notice it has this this groove right here and if you look on the inside of the steering neck it has a groove for it to line up to and this will only fit back in easily if it's in the groove I'll show you what it does if it's not in the groove so you can see if you're having issues this is you won't be able to push it down so both the wedge anchor and this have to line up and you have to slide them in simultaneously and get them to line up with the groove on the tube of the cart. And you can see it has a little bit of play. I like to basically find the play left to right and then center the wheel based on that. And um, generally this part works best with a gun, but I'll show you how to do it without a gun. Turn the wheel clockwise until the steering wheel is facing behind you. Find the center of the play Basically, I click it left, I click it right, and then I find the, the center of how far it went both ways. And then I go ahead and I begin tightening 
this nut. And all of a sudden it gets very tight. Hold the steering wheel still. Go ahead and keep tightening until it feels good and tight. That's really it. There's no torque spec. Just make sure it's tight. You don't want to be driving and pulling the wheel out in your hands and you know Ronald McDonalding down the street or something. I don't know, but I'm that's perfect headset. You should be able to lift your cart if your bearings are correctly adjusted, and you should be able to spin it and watch the steering wheel bounce back almost the full 180 degrees. So that's how you know your headset is perfectly adjusted and there should be no wobbling anymore no more steering sh you know shake none of that nonsense this solves all of that and obviously the solid tire gets rid of any possibility of having that so definitely look into this video and the instructions we're providing for you today and thanks for tuning in and check out the website and email us if you have any questions and like and subscribe thanks guys